What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Elk Practice, where we want to do some good and stuff. Well, I've gone on holiday in beautiful Paris, and I've been inspired to do another cooking video. Today, I'm going to show you some hors d'oeuvres I came up with. You can make up your own, and these are just a few of my ideas. I get some roast beef and horseradish, some caramelized onions and cheese, some honeycomb, some roasted fruit and fresh fruit, and I hope you enjoy, and guaranteed to impress anybody at any party or barbecue, or just for anybody you want to make some simple, easy, yet delicious food for. And when they ask you where you learned how to make it, tell them the South of France. Enjoy. All right, hors d'oeuvres, here we go. We got some uh, baguette, nice uniform baguette. Not one of those artistic, uh, rustic baguettes. You want a regular French baguette, nice and even all the way through. Makes nice and consistent sized pieces. We call these crostinis. Chop it up nice. They're all uniform, so they'll cook evenly. And throw them on a sheet pan. Space them out evenly. Give them a little distance, don't crowd them because uh, you don't want them to steam and give off steam while they're cooking. And they'll steam their crostini next to it. And uh, you want them to uh, roast and to bake, not to, uh, not to steam. That's one of the keys of cooking. Spacing, throw some olive oil on there. You can use a pastry brush or you can just squirt it on there, it's fine. Salt and pepper. Oil, salt and pepper is all you really need. Make anything taste great with just that. I got my veggies all cleaned off there, drying off. Fruits, I mean. We're gonna use some apple some pear, some berries, chop them up good. I'm gonna throw them in the oven. Oil, salt, and pepper, just like everything else. Give them a little toss, toss, throw them on the sheet pan, nice and spaced apart. Don't want the steam that they give off to bump into the little piece next to it. We're gonna do the same thing with the pear. Chop it up, might as well throw it on the same pan. They're all the same size, so they should cook pretty much at the same speed. Put them nice and even. Oil, salt, and pepper. Now I got the onion for the caramelized onions going with the uh, roast beef and cheese. Choppy, choppy. Here we go. Slice my finger off. Chop, chop. Right in the bowl. Throw some butter in the pan, a little bit of oil, toss it around, put in your onions, medium to high heat, salt, pepper, some sugar. You can use agave or brown sugar or even honey if you want, but whatever I just used, regular sugar, because that's what I had. Christine needs it done cooking. 350 degrees, yeah, between eight and 12 minutes. Keep an eye on them. The thin ones burnt, but whatever. Apples and pears are done, check the bottoms. Don't want them to overcook. Bottoms look great. Keep the onions moving. Don't want them to burn as they cook down. There we go, that looks good. You can go way more, but that's fine. Spread them out on a sheet pan to cool off. Let them go to room temperature before you put them in the fridge because a cold outside layer can insulate the warm inside and if you leave it in the fridge too long, it can grow bacteria and give you food poisoning. And nobody wants that. So let it cool off outside before you put it in the fridge. Spread it around, nice and good. Now I'm gonna use some expensive, nice, strong cheese. I recommend going to a place that sells a variety of cheese and, and it's a great thing to explore, real fun. Find what cheeses you like, a mild, strong, Whatever, I like the strong ones. This is a blue cheese. And uh, it is delicious. Put it on the crostinis. Now I get the onions. Spread them on there. Cheese and onions. Sweet and spicy. Straighten them all out. I'm gonna make a bunch of these. Now here's the star of the show, the key. This will blow your mind. Nice actual honeycomb. 
You can buy this at Whole Foods or wherever, but I recommend going online and finding a nice source because you can choose and explore different types from different flowers and all that stuff. And I got this in New Hampshire, so the bees who made this honey probably are like trash bees or something. There you go, right on top of the cheese. This honeycomb is delicious. Some berries with the cheese. Some blackberries and raspberries. Very sweet, clean tasting, fresh. Put them on there nicey nice. Oh yeah. Playing with the food. I want to eat one. Now here's for the roast beef, putting down a little horseradish. Looking back, I probably should have uh, cut this horseradish with a little bit of mayonnaise. It's pretty strong. A little creamy horseradish. Now here's the uh, pears and apples. Put that right on top of the, right on top of the cheese. Nice and good. A little sweet, spicy. I guess salty too, the cheese is, is a little salty. There's a roast beef going on top of the horseradish and the onions. Roll it up a little bit. Yeah. Now I went for the expensive roast beef. This stuff was like 16 bucks a pound. I only got like a third of a pound. But uh, your choice. Of course, I recommend the good stuff or you can make your own. Put it on there. Going for one or two bites. You know, if you're proper, I guess you can make one of these little hors d'oeuvres. Two bites if you're a lady. Or if you're a uh, savage, you can go for the whole thing. Whoop. A little bit of that cheese on top of the roast beef. Cheese and onions and roast beef. And horseradish, very good combo. Classic combination, delicious. Time to plate it all up, get it ready. Make it look nice, a little presentation. I don't have any herbs for garnish, but I don't care. Look at that. Reflecting the light. I don't know if I'm gonna fit them all on this plate. Whoops. There we go. Get in there. Oh uh, yeah, berries. Put that on my cereal. There we go. Bring this to a barbecue or a house party. You'll be all set. Just tell them you learned how to make it in the south of France when you were on holiday. That's how uh, rude people say they're on vacation. Unless you're actually from like Europe or something. No, not gonna fit. We're gonna do a little slide maneuver. I learned this uh, maneuver when I was uh, in the South of France. There we go. Don't be dump. I knew a chef once and uh, she told me to uh, throw a bunch of potatoes in the sink and really wasn't, wasn't sure what she wanted. So I was like, you want me to dump them in the sink? And she said, uh, I don't like the word dump. And uh, and I think it's a, that's a great way to um, Break the ice with somebody. Tell them you don't like the word dump. I'll, I'll never forget that moment. Dump. There we go. Looking good. Perfect fit. Yummy. All those colors. Cheese, onions, roast beef. Mm. Wait a sec. We're not done yet. We're going to step it up with some balsamic glaze. You can make this yourself by reducing some balsamic vinegar in your house. It'll stink up the house, but it smells good. You can buy some aged balsamic, very expensive, but it goes great with everything. Meat, cheese, fruit, bread. So good. And there we have the El Practice hors d'oeuvres. 
guaranteed to blow your socks off. Honeycomb, caramelized onions, roasted fruit, fresh fruit, roast beef, horseradish. All on a little crostini. So nice. And when your friends ask where you learned how to make this, tell them the Salt de France. And then tell them you know about a guarantee that you have, that you will live forever. If you like and subscribe to L Practice, I'm on Twitter too. Check it out. Have a great day.